Sivan Academy. This is again Deepak Krishnamayam, MA Structural Engineering, AMI, a verified indicator. So today we are going to see another test for the fresh concrete. Today we are going to see a test called the flow test, which is one of the most important tests to see whether the concrete is prone to segregation or not with respect to cohesiveness and the richness of the concrete. But before that, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel of the Academy. Also follow us on the app and the website of the Academy. So let's find out some segregation. Hello everyone, good to see you, hope you're having a great day. So we are back again with another test on the fresh concrete in the fresh concrete series, test on the fresh concrete series. Okay, so previously we have seen the slum cone test and the compaction factor test. So both were the workability test. So one is the, one is, uh, so slum cone was the test that was universally accepted in the field, whereas the compaction factor test, which is more sensitive than the slum test, which is for the uh, non so workable concrete and also concrete with low water content in it. So today we are going to see another test that will that will show how the how much concrete is prone to segregation okay based on the cohesiveness and the consistency of the concrete. So I present you the flow test. Okay so before entering the topic let's have some basic facts about the flow test so that we can crack some viva questions about it. So let's see some of the basic facts. So first and foremost as I usually, usually say, uh, any laboratory exper experiment should be based on some specific guidelines provided by a recognized institution. So here we follow IS 11199 again, 1959, which is for, uh, provided by the Indian standards, obviously. So this test is also known as the slum flow test, flow test, and also the flow table test. Okay, so slum test, slum flow test, flow test, and the flow table test. So all these things are the same, it's only different names, okay? Now, what indicates? This indicates the quality of concrete with respect to consistency, cohesiveness, and proneness to segregation. So this is one of those few tests that shows us uh, whether the concrete is prone to segregation. Okay, and also, some, uh, and also the consistency of the concrete can be checked, and also the cohesiveness of the concrete can be checked. Along with which, we can also get a small idea about the workability of the concrete, all right? So it's a very simple test, but very effective. Okay, very simple yet very effective. So this is this test is used primarily for the concrete that are too workable. That means the water content is too high for it. Okay, so such so so in such cases the slum cone test won't give you much a good idea. Okay, so for uh, so in such cases we use this test. That is when we have a concrete sample of highly workable in nature. Workable in nature. That means it contains high water content in it. All right. Now, also, uh, this test has a small, uh, what can we say, a small limitation. That is, the extent of the normal size of the aggregate f should be 38 mm for this test. I mean, should be below 38 mm. The maximum extent is 38 mm. If the aggregate size goes beyond that, this test is useless. Okay. So let's move on to the apparatus. The first and foremost, the apparatus that you require from the name itself, we can suggest that it's a flow table. Okay, so a flow table is a square-shaped table, all right, which has a side of 70 centimeters, and also it has a grip and hinge. All right, so it's a big table right there, like a table-like substance. Uh, it's it, uh, it's, a, it's a small structure, okay, which is movable. Uh, it's made sometimes uh, the material may be stainless steel, so it has a side length. I mean, it's a square, so single side length will be 70 centimeters. It has a grip and a hinge so that it can be uh, pulled up and f uh, put down. Okay, so you understand that about when we uh, discuss the procedure. Next one is a slum cone mold. So it usually almost all the laboratories and colleges use a slum cone mold for it, which has dimensions of 20, uh, upper diame d lower diameter of 20 centimeter, upper, di upper diameter of uh, 10 centimeter, and also the height of 30 centimeter. But sometimes uh, another apparatus called as the Abrams cone is used. Okay, the Abrams cone. It's just like this mold only, but only difference is that there's a small change in the uh, lower diameter. Okay, that will be 25 centimeters. The upper will be 17 centimeters, and the height will be 30 itself. Okay, so don't worry. Most probably you'll be using the slum cone in the colleges, right? So another we have the tamping rod. As usual, we have the length 60 centimeter, diameter 16 mm. Okay, one side rounded. So this is used for the compaction, as we all know. And we need a steel ruler or steel measuring tape to measure that uh, diameter of the concrete spread. All right, or to measure the concrete spread. And also we require a trowel, okay? A trowel to level the top surface of the concrete or top surface of the cone. 
All right, that means the crown frustum, the top frustum of the cone should be leveled with the help of the trowel. Level. <coughs> so, okay, now let's move on to the procedure itself. Okay, the procedure, it's a very simple test, it's very simple only. First and foremost, wet the floor table by using a cloth dipped in water. Okay, so that, that floor table should be wetted enough with the help of a dipped water, I mean cloth dipped in water. All right. And also there should not be any excess water in it. It should be removed by a rubber squeezer. It's like a, it's, it's like a sponge only. It will help you to squeeze out the excess water from the table or the, on the surfaces. All right. Now, uh, place the cone okay, or the mold firmly on the top of the table. Okay, so in this floor table, there will be markings, just like a cross here on the center, on which we have to keep the mold firmly. So, okay. So the mold has to keep on the crosshairs itself or that the marking at the center itself. Otherwise, it might be caught into some undulations. So be careful about placing the mold on the uh, crosshairs or on that markings on the center of the table. All right. Now they place the mold. Now fill the mold with the concrete. All right. So concrete mixture has to be pr uh, prepared prior just before we are doing the experiment. Just before when we are doing the experiment, the entire concrete mix should be, pro uh, should be prepared. Now. Uh, fill the cylinder, I mean the fill the mold, okay, fill the conical, frustum conical mold with the help of uh, travel or any kind of helping aids and fill it with concrete. So how should be filled? It should be filled by half, half. That means it should be filled in two layers, okay, appro approximately in uh, two, uh, two same height, same dimension layers. So it should be uh, done in two layers, okay, first layer and also each layer has to be compacted, okay, with the help of the tamping rod. So minimum of 25 tampings each should be provided for each layer. All right. So first layer we have given 25 tampings. Again, the second layer, 25 tampings. So make sure that the tamping rod goes right into the corner and hit the uh, bottom surface. All right. So then only the compaction will really take place. And also we must spread the compaction uniformly in the cross section. All right. So compact, the compaction should be spread uniformly to the cross section of the uh, entire cross section or entire volume of the mold or the cone. Okay. So here we are. Now we have the cylinder filled with the concrete. Now after this, we have to level the top surface by using the trowel. Okay. We must, um, what can we say? We must remove any kind of excess concrete or excess aggregates on the surfaces and the top surfaces. And we must level the, the frustum of the cone in a pakka leveling. All right, that level should be in the correct, correct way. All right, now after leveling is done, before removal of the mold, we must wait for 30 seconds so that everything will be set. Okay, that's so the mold will be in the set, everything will be in its positions. So wait for 30 seconds. Now after 30 seconds, the mold is removed. So how it is removed? It is removed by pulling it upwards. Okay, steadily. So we must pull it in a single take. All right. So hold the hold the mold and just pull out upside, right? Now after that, the concrete sometimes the concrete may may collapse. Sometimes con so most probably the concrete that mo the concrete mix inside will collapse. All right, because it's too much workable. For example, and once the mold is removed, the table is that floor table has grips and hinges to it. So you hold on the grip and the table is lifted up to 40 mm. That means up to almost up to four centimeters and allow it to fall 15 times, okay, within a span of 15 seconds. So lift up the table, 40, uh, uh, a max, up to a maximum of 4 centimeters, and fall it, and uh, allow it to fall. So 15 times you have to do that, do, do that practice within a time span of 15 seconds. So lift up, fall, lift up, fall within 15 seconds. All right. So now the experiment is over. Now we have to take the measurements. All right. So. So once we, once that lifting up and pull, uh, falling down of the table is over, the entire concrete will be spread. All right. So now take the diameter of the floored concrete. How can we do that? The best way is to put a mark along the uh, circumference of the co concrete spread. Okay. So it'll be easy for us to take the, uh, what can we say, the measurement of the diameter. All right. Now measure the diameter in both sides. That means along the both sides of the square. Okay. Take the average of that, and hence that's the uh, number we require. That's the result we get. So that result is known as the spread diameter or the flow diameter. Please round it to nearest 5 mm. Okay, so it should be in mm, and we round it to nearest 5 mm. So that's it. So uh, now we go for the calculations. All right. So calculation is very simple. 
Actually, uh, this calculation is not much uh, asked in your laboratories, I mean in your college labs, but sometimes if they ask what is flow percentage, so flow percentage can be calculated by SD, that is a spread diameter, minus the bottom dimension of the cone, that is 20, 20 centimeters here, okay, divided by 20 into 100, all right. So if you're using, um, what can I say, Abraham's cone, here it will be 25. Okay, that's it, simple, just a percentage. Now what are the inference we get from this? So once the concrete is lift, I mean the mold is lift, lifted up to the concrete, we must examine that spread, okay. We must, we take the diameters of it, and once we examine that, if the concrete, or the concrete, can, what can we say, there are too much water in it, if the, con the water is, uh, if the mold, or, I mean the aggregates, uh, sticks on the center and the water flows away. That mix will be too much, I can say too much, too wet mix, too much of a wet mix. Okay, so these are just the inf inferences that we get, but mainly the result what we obtain is the spread diameter. All right, so from there we can understand how much flow it can be done, and also from this flow percentage number, we can understand how much percentage the flow has obtained, or how much a percentage of flow has done by using this. Uh, I mean, how much flow, how much percentage of flow that this uh, mixture of concrete has undergone. Okay, so that's all for today. I hope you understood today's lesson. It's a very simple experiment. If you have any doubts, please uh, put your comments in your suggestions. And also, please read my presentation and recommend and share the slides. This is the link to my profile in the Academy app. The other tests based on the coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, cement are explained over there in my other series. And also, thank you once again for tuning in. Thank you for being a good listener. I wish you a great day. Ciao.